Hi, my name is Stephen Proud. I'm a electrical designer of 25 plus years of experience. The purpose of this video is to provide you a clearer understanding and to possibly accelerate your, your job that you're working on. Enjoy. Okay, this is a demo to show control over I.O. for a CMMS AS series controller from Festo. So we're going to create a new project. We're going to select the plugin. I have many plugins installed already. This is our controller here. I'll pick the latest software. If you have older software, you can, or older firmware, you can select the older ones, but I'm going to select the latest. okay so at that point it basically created a shell and this is where you grab your hardware out of the box and you come into here you select your controller so it's either old one or new one so the g2 is the latest controller there's not many differences at all between the old one and the new one if you're using a field bus you have two, only two options on this particular controller but in this case we're doing it uh, the control with io only so this will stay empty now we select our motor so right on the side of the nameplate you'll have the type code uh, in my case I've got an older series motor 55s TS I don't have a gearbox <coughs> if I did you would select the gearbox here the next button in this case, I'm going to be using a linear axis from Festo. Our most popular axis is the EGC. I'll stick with the size 50. We'll go with a 1,000 stroke, 1,000 millimeters. The next button, and this is what you have file. If this is not what you have, then Modify it to suit your physical hardware. The OK button. Okay, for the new inexperienced users, <coughs> I suggest you turn on the dynamic help. The dynamic help is always up on top, and depending on what field you click, it will immediately go to what you're what you've clicked on the right hand side it'll and give you an overview of what you're you're dealing with um, I'm going to turn that off because the video is quite small so the frame size is too small to keep it up so from here on out I'm going to continue to use the next and previous I could navigate using these right here but in order to hit everything on the head and be sure when with your project then I just say next and previous so the next brings you to the application data the operating mode settings again we're using digital IO only to control this so that's what we're going to stick with not doing anything special this is a simple operation down here you're going to put in your load uh, this is extremely important because the, the gains will be calculated based on this load at a later point in time. So if this is a vertical, you would put vertical. Um, in my case, it's not. Uh, inverse rotation polarity, that's used to reverse the direction of travel. Messages, the target reach, this will be where you open up the user catalog for the axis, the EGC, for example, and you will manually put in whatever the axis is capable of. Um, the following error can typically stay the way it is. Um, until you need to modify it for specific reasons on the application. The velocity reached, these can all stay at the default. Again, we're just keeping with the simple thing. Hit the next button. Motor. Okay, this, is a, this is important because a lot of people like to use this controller for a 120 volt. Um, and the 120 volt AC input will then be converted to DC. 
you multiply that by 1.2, I think it is, uh, you'll get your DC voltage. So this right here, if, if you're using 120 like, like me in my case, then the, uh, it, typically you'll be hitting around 160 volts DC. Um, if this stays the way it is a default, which is meant for a 240 hookup, you'll have uh, under voltage faults. So for this particular case, I'm going to modify it to 150 volts. That way I'm about 10 volts below the, the DC bus that is running. Um, I can disable editing again, hit the next button. Nothing to do here. It will determine the angle later. It's very important the limit switch. It's either normally open, normally closed. In my case, I have normally closed, which is, you know, fail safe, it's typical. Um, this down here is very important. Um, typically, this is modified to suit your application. You don't want to stop during e-stops or, or things like that at too hard a deceleration and shock your mechanical system into a mechanical failure. So I'll discuss this a little bit later, but for now, just keep in mind that these will have to be adjusted to suit your application, as is everything else in this project. Uh, this here, now we're on the homing tab. You have a couple options. Limit switch is the, the physical over-travel limit switches. One of them is being used for the homing method. Uh, if you select block, then you're physically going to hit bottom of stroke at some point, and it'll torque out and say this is home. Actual position is self-explanatory. Wherever you are at that time, it's homing. And then we've got the same thing, except we're using the zero pulse in the encoder. So for my case, I'm going to use some, I'm going to use a limit switch, and I'll, I'll use the accuracy of the, uh, the zero pulse afterwards. The search and crawl speeds, and running speeds are all self-explanatory in this little picture here. And the zero point is basically once you hit the physical point and have established where zero is, it'll move the drive either you know plus or minus whatever this value is here, <clears throat> and then and then call that zero. For example, with the limit switch, the the defaults here usually work pretty well. The the limit switch, you don't want to be sitting on the limit switch the over travel limit switch during normal travel. So typically you move it forward away from the switch so that you never go back into it during normal operations. The next button. So this is where you set up your software limits. Typically these are set up uh, default based on that previous, um, based on this previous zero point here. So you hit the next button. So it starts you off with minus. So the software limit is physically on the over travel which is not the best i'll let you adjust these the next button these will be populated after you've gone online uh, the gains once you've established the load as i told you earlier then you'll hit the calculate button it will calculate the load based on the configured system if you don't do that um, then the system won't be as tuned as it should be if you want to play with something open loop, you'll hit default values. I'm just going to close this real sec. So if I hit default values motor, see how the blue changes up here? So this is as if there's nothing connected to the motor. I'm going to hit the next button. I'm going to leave this for now because I've said that I have an EGC, but I don't really have one. I just have an open shaft. So I just wanted a linear axis simulation, I guess you could call it. Hit the next button. These outputs here are very important. The motion complete, the acknowledge start, the error, that's about the minimal you want. Uh, the way any move works is that you execute a start task, um, which is DIN 8 in this particular case. When the controller has accepted the, the task, it'll acknowledge at digital output 2, the acknowledge start. That's when you turn off the DIN 8, then you wait for the motion complete to come on. When the move's finished, it'll come on, and that's your sequence of one move. So I'm going to leave these default. Keep in mind that uh, you have 
digital input 9 called mode select bit 0 or 1 sorry and din 12 which is mode select bit 0 those determine the modes of operation and there's four different modes of operation they can those particular bits when they change will change the functionality of what each input is so you select this here and you scroll now you can see that on each mode of operation the physical functionality of each input will change but again this is a simple application we will stay in single set or single position set mode and continue the next button we're not going to set up any analog jogging just keep in mind that you have a initial crawling velocity and you've got a delay and then it'll jump up to the max velocity. If you don't want to have a jump, then you can modify either the time or keep the crawling and the max velocity the same. Then you come into the record table. This is the position set table that you use to call the individual moves that you've set up. So again, there's different moves. You've got absolute, and then you've got two different relative types of moves. I'm just going to put in some values here. I'll call the first one 1 millimeter, 500, 1,000, actually. Uh, okay, so you'll see that you've also got a profile. You don't see any Excel and D-cell here because there's another tab. Okay, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. There's this tab right here, which is, it shows you velocity, excel, decel, smoothing, all the nice stuff. And there's a number. So you have eight, eight different position profile, velocity, excel, decel, and so on and so forth as you see it. Um, and you associate that with the profile right here for each record. Okay, there are, on this particular controller is up to 63. So it's one through six. So you've got 62 positions where you can have multiple different things here. Now, to make things a little easier on your eyes, if you double click on one of these records here and click on show, it will show you that this profile is zero here, uh, what these values are. So if I come down here and I put in 150, Excel, decel. I'm going to leave the rest of stuff as it is. Hit apply. If I close this now and go to this page here, you'll see here that it's changed this row here. If I come down here and I put in 300, put in 5, 5, and I now come in down here and put a 1 in here. And I double click on this, you'll see it's associated with this. If I hit show, if I now change this to a zero, you'll see how it changes back. So you're, you're, you're selecting your velocity package, if you want to call it that. Um, so let's take that one there and I'll take this one here as a, a one. So now we're getting into the error management. It's important to understand what these are. Uh, the, the, the text itself is self-explanatory. The important thing out of this feature here is the top headings. If you have the dynamic help on, it'll tell you that PS means power stage off, Q stop is quick stop, and then there's warn and ignore. So back on this page, where was it here? These right here. So we have quick stop and then otherwise you have uh, a halt. The stop input signal will be the halt, uh, which nobody uses, uh, and then the limit switch. So if I was in the middle of moving a move and I hit a limit switch, an over travel limit switch, then the axis would decel at five meter per second squared. If I have something uh, in the error management set for quick stop, it will decel to a stop. If I put the power stage off as, as the option, then if I'm going at 100 mile an hour and I encounter the error, the axis basically shuts the power off between the motor and the axis and you'll have a 100 mile an hour coast until it stops, which is not typically desirable. And 
I won't talk about the trace because it's not very uh, important to the simple application. So now we want to commission the axis. First thing we want to do is turn on the bottom tab here. We've got a couple of online tabs which allow you to commission the axis. First thing we want to do is do a download. So we have to establish a connection between the computer and the axis. So you select the FCT interface. In my case, I know I have my serial cable hooked up to COM1. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go online. And I'm going to download over top of whatever is there. OK. Now, this particular controller has dip switches at the front face of it. They are all to the left or to the off position. At this point, um, we're online. I'm going to, we've done a download. You'll see that we have buttons over here on the right. We've done the download and the project that is on my PC was placed in the volatile memory. In order for it to be there on cycle of power, you need to press a store. So I'm going to press a store right now. Now it's taking it from the volatile memory of the controller and putting on the double EEPROM. And now we're ready to commission. So you'll see here that I have a DC bus voltage, which means, you know, turn on the enable. I now have a power stage. This shows me that uh, I have my 120 volt DC coming in. The power stage is active. The rectifiers are firing. And we have a DC voltage going out to the motor as a 166 volts. As with any servo, the first thing we need to do is establish a home. If you haven't homed, uh, typically um, you will need... Oh, if you have not homed the axis before, right now the homing valid is on. I'm going to... I'm going to go offline quickly here and just cycle power. Okay, power has been cycled. I'm going to go back online now. It should not prompt me for anything at all. But you'll notice here that the homing valid is not on. because I have a single turn encoder. If you look here, the TS, that S stands for single turn encoder, which means you know, one revolution, it's an absolute encoder, but as soon as you go past that, you don't know where you are. So homing valid is typically not. So when you first start up the controller, you have a single turn encoder, not a multi-turn, then you need to home it. If you don't home it, then you don't have the options to do, either do an absolute move or a relative move. On this manual mode tab, the single step here is a relative move, so they're not blue. All you can do at this point here is jog the axis by pressing and holding, and it's moving, as you see here. But I can't, cannot click the single step here until I do a home. So I'm going to home the axis. This is the start positioning here, so I'm going to home it. And it's in the middle of homing right now, right here, the axis, and the Limit switch is going to be triggered right now, and then comes off the switch. Now you get the homing complete, homing successful. The OK. Now you have the option to uh, let's go a 10 millimeter move. If I hit the this will be a plus move, so it moves 10 millimeters. If I hit it again, it's going to move another 10. If I change this to a 20. It should go to 40, and you have some simple moves happening. Okay. Now, in addition to that, you have the position set table. Go back to the position list. So again, the yellow is an indication that you can press something. If I click down here, it changes where that yellow is. If I now click on this, it's going to execute this record. So right now it's executing this record. And you can also see this over here. So our, say that we're going to do this one right here. So there's our target. So if I change and I hit this one here, our target is immediately one millimeter. 
there's our actual and our velocity until it gets there. So that's a simple method. Um, there are other options here. You can populate the uh, the box and and over the serial cable execute the moves. See here how it's 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 scrolling through each record here. It's going back and forth. It's basically executing the the moves as you go here. You can stop the sequence. And the same thing applies for optimizing. If you've got a non-Festo drive, oftentimes you need to manually tune it. Um, you'll need to run a sequence back and forth in order to get the gains perfect. Uh, memory card, turn this off. That way it's not reading from the memory card if there's no memory card there. Again, hit the save button. Download, yes. Okay. Store, yes. It's important to know that every single time, if, if I do not have this FCT device on, then I cannot do anything in here. You know, like there's nothing I can do because the FCT software, which is what this stands for, does not have control. So if I wanted to do a download right now, it always asks you this. Do you want to download? You say yes. Well, it has to take control. So it automatically does the checkbox down here. And when you're finished, you have to turn it back off in order for the I.O. to take back over. So now let's talk about the I.O. Now that we have three decimal numbers here, you know, one, two, three, now we have the ability to have our PLC or whatever type of device control the axis. So you'll see here that uh, we have the digital inputs. I'm going to move to the digital I.O. tab. That way you can see what this inputs actually mean. So DIN 0 over here is record select 0. That is this bit right here. Okay. So if I have this bit on, DIN 0, okay, and the limit switches are normally closed, so that's 6 and 7, okay, those are good, uh, 4 and 5, 4 and 5, these are very important, these are the, I call them the power stage and the control enable, so with an I.O. controller, the power stage must come on first, that's digital input 4, Minimum of 20 milliseconds later, digital input 5 comes on. Once you have 4 and 5, no other issues. Uh, this particular controller has a connector on the bottom front of it. Uh, it comes from the factory default with a jumper. Uh, that's another channel to the DIN 4 here. So this, these I.O. cable, this, these I.O., these input and outputs are through the X1 cable on the top, the 25 pin, the bottom connector, the X3 connector has a uh, additional channel. So this DIN 4, the power stage enable, the X3 has another power stage enable. It's another, it's another circuit to make the dual channel. So that has to be on when, when the digital input 4 and 5 have been turned on properly, then you have the power stage active and you're ready to move. So if I want to execute move number uh, one, I turn on binary select one, and I, this one right here, DIN eight was just turned on, and it moved to one. If I turn on the first, the second bit, that's, that's, bi that's binary, that's decimal two, and I'm going to turn on DIN 8, and it shows you that it's executing record 2, the target and the actual are not equal. If I turn on the first two bits, that's binary bits 0 and 1, the equivalent of decimal 3. I hit the start bit, and it executes. So I can go back and forth here. You'll see that the acknowledge takes place during the travel. Motion complete comes on when it's finished. Start it again. Turn it off with DIN 8. And that is it. That's all there is to 
controlling a Festo CMMS AS via IO from an external device. Thank you. Have a nice day.